Now, Dubai Private Equity Group Abraj has entered into a conditional agreement to acquire Ghana's dairy fan milk. Um, I'm joined on the line by Samson Akligo, head of research at Data Bank Group, to give us his thoughts on this developing and the broader Ghana market. Thank you so much, Samson, for joining us. And maybe we should start on that on that yeah, front. Well, the Abraj story is pretty interesting. We're seeing. Uh, private equity company going aggressively into Africa. Of course, they are taking a pretty significant stake in Ghana as well. I think the speculation now is, though, is that the company may be delisted from the Ghana market. But can you just talk us through how the market has received this news? No, no, no. I think that uh, the, it is really more, more like a rumor and speculation that the company is going to delist uh, from the Ghanaian market. Well, what we have seen now is that the market has taken it a bit calmly. Uh, we have not seen uh, a lot of excitement and then at the same time uh, people have not shown any uh, anxiety. Uh, I, I think that the, the main reason is because um, people are now trying to understand the Abrash group and, and what they, they, they stand for uh, because proud to this transaction which they actually did not do uh, directly related to Ghana where the parent company of uh, Fanmel, right. the Abrad Group, uh, was not known to the market. Uh, today, uh, we have realized that uh, the Abrad Group has indicated that for now, let's say, the, um, the, the incoming owners of Fanmel uh, have indicated, Fanmel International have indicated that even though uh, in terms of the Ghanaian holdings, they will have about 57%, they do not, they, they do not wish to trigger the takeover uh, rules in, in Ghana. And clearly, that is a signal that uh, the company does not intend to, to delist, at least uh, for now. Okay, well, of course, if they were to delist, I think it would be disappointing for investors that are looking for new options in terms of securities on the Ghana market. I do know that there is an initiative to create an alternative securities market for SMEs. Can you just talk us through the progress with that initiative? Oh, yeah, sure. I think that the market was just launched uh, about uh, barely about a month ago. And uh, what we have seen is like a lot of preparatory work is being done. Uh, you you will, uh, and of course, understand that even though the rules have been relaxed a bit and made more flexible, a key component of this new reform of uh, this, um, alternative market is for the government venture capital uh, uh, trust to work closely with some of the M M SMEs that will be listed. Yeah. So uh, it will take some time for a lot of these SMEs to be prepared uh, to be suitable for the alternative market. And I think that we are in the period to witness that come and uh, preparation mode, at least identification of targets and how, of course, uh, the, the alternative market will be grown. So that is where we are, we are now. Right, Samson, just before we let you go, um, can you just share your thoughts on the development around the IFC's proposed 2 billion CD bond? I heard that that has now been postponed, and they are citing the high interest rates in the market as a factor there, and I, I think there are some doubts as to whether or not some of the funds raised will be able to be um, invested in areas that can pr produce a return above the borrowing cost. So can you just talk us through how significant this development is, and your thoughts about how even corporates um, across Ghana are coping with the high interest rate environment? Oh, yeah, so I think that uh, the Ghanaian uh, interest rate uh, debacle is a big problem. And uh, the underlying uh, factor is because of fiscal uh, indiscipline. Uh, so what, and uh, also as much as we are uh, concerned about the high interest rate now, it is important that uh, in Ghana and for the market, we understand that these measures in fact, the recent highs in interest rates were in response to the currency crisis last year. And uh, the only way that we can get that corrected is if government actually looks at its fiscal spending. Uh, we are expecting a supplementary budget that, that seeks to plug some of the holes in, in, in the budget. And we hope that that would restore at least some fiscal sanity uh, going forward. Uh, but what I can say is that in terms of uh, the real sector in Ghana, the tradition has been that the, the, the real sector is able and have been able to cope with abnormally high interest rates. We're talking about interest rate being rigid, especially when it comes to lending rates about 30% in the country. Right. And that is something that has been the trend for at least uh, the past five years. Okay, and so uh, on one side, it creates a, 
debt financing issues, but on the other side, it also shows the strength of of, uh, of, of returns, of course, in the real sector. Right. And a lot of companies are able to uh, to service their debt, at least uh, looking at our NPL ratios uh, compared to uh, the target that the central bank has yeah, uh, but that, for the that, commercial bank. That notwithstanding something, it definitely must be a tough environment to do business. I mean, borrowing at thirty percent—that is steep. But thank you so much for your thoughts on that point. Something I could go head of research at Data Bank in Accra.